Thank you very much. I, I'm delighted to be with you uh, once again. I often uh, remind people that uh, we cover quite an enormous area of the surface of the planet in Oceania. It is uh, somewhere between a third and of the planet. Most of it is water. It is a very fragile environment. There are 41 million people living in this area. And when we talk about Oceania, regularly people think immediately of very large and modern Western countries like Australia or New Zealand. We are only two of those uh, conferences, of those gatherings of churches in the area. We also cover the Pacific nations and Papua New Guinea and the Solomon Islands. I had the great joy only last month to be in Port Moresby for the visit of Pope Francis. To see the joy on the people's faces, it wasn't just happiness, it was deep, profound joy to realise that they were not forgotten. That the Holy Father took the time to come from here, from Rome, which is traditionally seen as the heart of the church, and to go across the world to one of the most fragile areas. The fragility is largely ecological, it is an area of the planet that is very rich in natural resources. And yet many nations look hungrily at the area, trying desperately to come in and negotiate by offering all kinds of sweet packages to nations that are often quite economically poor and therefore vulnerable. And people and nations come in and they look and they see minerals, uh, precious metals, are very happy to embrace deep sea mining, logging and enormous fishing ventures, depleting the oceans and the seas of so many of the resources. Today is, of course, the feast of St Francis of Assisi who reminds us to look at creation. And it's very tempting in this time of, of history to look at all of the ecological things, at the oceans, the trees, the fish, the animals. It's all very important. They are all an integral part of creation. But sometimes I worry that we forget that on the seventh day God created man and woman in his own image the crown of all creation. And while we are trying very uh, strongly to uh, protect the environment and to care for the planet, sometimes we do it at the expense of the human beings who live on the planet. So while it is important that we see uh, that these areas are being exploited in some ways, especially financially, economically, one of the things the Holy Father pointed to very simply was the plight of people who live in the areas, who walk the planet, who are the human communities. And so for us in the area of uh, the Federation here in, in Oceania, there in Oceania, it's been very important over the last year from this first session of the Synod gathering to this one here to actually walk with people or, as I said last year, to get in a boat and travel along with them. One of the issues that has become very, very uh, heightened has been the, the issue of migrating people across the oceans of Oceania. And so more stable, economically wealthy countries like Australia and New Zealand end up being the destinations for people to try and come and, and settle and resettle not just because they're looking for uh, more wealth, but because at times they are actually having to leave their homes because of rising seas and sinking islands. I like to remind people occasionally 
that the international date line runs right through the middle of Oceania. And that means that every single day begins and ends in Oceania. I would put that out to the rest of the world and the church not to forget the peoples of Oceania in our synodal journey. It's so easy for us to feel very comfortable in Europe or in North America. We forget at times that we have neighbours in Africa, in Asia, in South America and the most vulnerable on the planet in Oceania. So this is something I would like to speak for in a positive way for the people who are so often forgotten. And yet in those communities, especially in the islands right across the ocean, the Pacific Ocean, the concept of synodality is not some foreign introduction introduced by Pope Francis or by the church at large. It is something that they have been doing for thousands of years. It is very natural for communities to sit together, to listen to one another respectfully, to speak respectfully, to engage in conversation. The other thing which has been very important in the travels that I've been able to do in this last 12 months, I've been to Guam, I've been to New Zealand, I've been to Papua New Guinea, I've been to various parts in Australia as part of my role as the President of the Federation. It's been a wonderful opportunity to hear the people not just talk about the oceans or the fishing or the, or the logging, but to talk about their faith, to hear how they are saying, we are a people of God and we desire to speak the gospel of Jesus Christ in the world in which we live. So often when we talk about synodality, we are caught up in many issues which I term as niche church issues that often emerge in Europe or North America, often out of churches and communities that have great wealth, great access to technology, resources. And those issues become all-consuming and focusing for people to the point that they then become an imposition on people who sometimes struggle simply to feed their families, to be able to survive the rising sea levels or the dangerous journeys across wild oceans trying to resettle in new lands. It's a new form of colonialism. And the most vulnerable people are often oppressed by that. That's far from the mission of proclaiming the good news. It's certainly not the mind of a synodal church in mission. And it is something that I would hope we as a community of the church or community of communities of the church globally will remember. The issues are important. We must hear people speak of them. But they are not so important that they become all-consuming to the point that others cannot live or exist on the face of this planet, simply because people of might and power and authority and wealth decide that those niche issues are the most important ones. And so often when they speak of them, we do not hear the name of Jesus. We do not hear the good news of Christ, which is the only good news which is good for every single person on this planet. So there is a lot to do. Our journey is not over. We are just beginning. But I would say, please, do not forget the most vulnerable. And remember also that when you come to Oceania, you here in Europe are the periphery. Thank you. Thank you for the question. I thought someone might uh, want to pick at that scab. It's not a bad thing to ask, though. There are two that I think of immediately. The first one is governance. So I constantly hear people talking about restructuring courier offices, administration, etc., etc. I have no problems whatsoever in the church in being transparent, in being accountable, in being open, in being participatory. I think all of that is absolutely necessary 
and essential as part of a synodal community of the church. That's very important. I get very distressed, though, when I start hearing people talk about networking. That's business language. Surely our language is communion, fellowship, community. So these niche kinds of models, I now hear companies who are global, who have offices in Broken Bay, where I live, in Sydney, and those companies are using ecclesial kinds of uh, organisations, of gatherings, of participatory models, and I hear the church using business models. That's niche, and it will be the death of us as a community because we are trying to become so sophisticated in our administration that we are becoming so narrow that we are, in fact, excluding people from participatory models of a synodal church in mission. That's one. The second one, and you've named it, is women in the church. Now, there is a question with regards ordination that has been going on and on and on for years, not just for the synod. The Holy Father has asked for it to be studied on more than one occasion, and there is a study group at the moment that he has asked for to take it aside from the floor at the moment, not to remove it from the conversation, but to approfondire, to go more deeply into it, to actually see what's there. At the moment, when we talk about women in the church, that's the hot-button issue. And as a consequence, women who in many parts of the church and world are treated as second-class citizens are totally ignored. This is scandalous in the church and in the world, all because a small minority with a large, powerful Western voice, are obsessed with pushing this issue. I have no problems with this issue being talked about and studied, as the Holy Father has rightly said. But at the cost of the dignity of women in the church and in the world? Absolutely not. When women are pushed to the margins, into places of poverty, violence, domestic or social, when their work opportunities are narrowed and they are excluded from the participation in the community and in the church, this is a scandal against the gospel. And we must speak into this rather than being obsessed always by this other issue. Let the other issue be studied. But for heaven's sakes, in the name of Jesus, can we look after and include our women? Can we stop talking about women and listen to and speak with women. This is how the church is called to act. Look at Jesus in the gospel. He walks with them. He talks with them. He eats with them. He listens to them. He includes them in the life of the gospel. Are we not called to do the same? These are two niche issues. I hope there's enough there for you.